How were you feeling around <laughs> lunchtime today when you saw the wire hit that Derrick Henry was signing a two-year contract with the Baltimore Ravens? How were you feeling when that news came across? You were probably feeling like, hey, ooh, oh, oh boy, okay. You, you see that come across the wire, and that gets your attention, doesn't it? Omar Khan probably saw that too. And just a couple of short hours after that broke, Omar Khan threw the hammer down. Good afternoon, everybody. A good Tuesday afternoon, March 12th, 2024. He's Chris Halleck. I'm Corey Crisson. This is the Southside Beat. This is a splash signing. This is a big effing deal, yeah, Chris. It is. Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen, former Raven, Patrick is a Queen. Pittsburgh Steeler. Yep. Three years, forty-one million. He is twenty-four years old. <laughs> Aaron Curry on Twitter he is cheesing he over is, this. He is happy. Twenty-four <laughs> years old, second-team All-Pro, Pro Bowler, career season in twenty twenty-three. He is now at three years for $41 million, a Pittsburgh Steeler. Yep. Unbelievable. I, I, I don't, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a lot to, in terms of a reaction to it. All the only thing I can say is I'm proud to be, I'm happy to be proven wrong. Um, you know, I, I commend the Steelers for sticking true to their guns to a certain extent. You know, while a lot of teams like to flap in the wind and react uh, to just about everything that happens, the Steelers stand firm in the way that they do business. Right? Um, while the while the entire NFL watched the Cleveland Browns go from quarterback to quarterback to quarterback to quarterback to quarterback, and so on and so on, the Steelers and uh, so many other teams that model consistency do things their own way. And for the most part, a lot of those ways are good, but then some of those things can also kind of get in the way and kind of keep the team behind the times. This is not that this is finally playing at the top of the market. I had somebody ask me this morning on a feed entry that I, you know, an entry in the feed that I had on our, on our Steelers feed on DK Pittsburgh sports.com. I wrote how, why, the first day of legal tampering was a pretty slow day for the Steelers and said, well, this is what they do. They're going to wait it with are going to wait things out. They're going to see how the market plays out and then they're going to spread their wealth. They don't play at the top of the market. But when Patrick queen is available for three years, $41 million, Woo, do it. You, you can get him for less than 50. I'm not, I'm no mathematician here, but you get him for less than 15 million a year. When I thought it was like dead set 18, maybe even 20 for a team that's really desperate and you get him for three years, essentially just a little bit more than 13 million a year. That's a no brainer. <laughs> that's he a turns no 25 brainer. in August. He turns 25. Not just that, but I mean, four years he's racked up for, I'll, I'll pull up the, I'll pull up the stats real quick. For those of you who have, year, who have he not, had, he, had, he had a career year in 2023. Okay. Second team, all pro. He had a tw career year, career high in tackles, six pass breakups, a couple of sacks. Like, he was everything for that Ravens defense. Over and, four and years. Sorry, over four years. 400, 454 tackles, 13 and a half sacks, five forced fumbles, 15 passes defensed, and four interceptions from the inside linebacker position. Come on. In Come four, on. And that's, I mean, when's the last time the Steelers, like, is it Ryan Shazier, the last time they had a guy who can just rack up tackles? I mean, forget about racking up tackles, and that's obviously a huge part of it. Well, yeah, but that's like, what I'm saying. Just that, not to mention everything else that he can do. Nobody said Shazier, and with all due respect to Holcomb and Alexander and, and those that have followed, mm -hmm. nobody has been as big of a splash player's queen at the inside linebacker position that the Steelers have gotten mm -hmm. since Shazier. This yeah. is the highest upside player the Steelers have gotten since Ryan Shazier. And, and, and I understand Devin Bush, he's a first round pick on him and everything. Bush does not even come close to what Queen was or is. Even in the promise that we saw from Devin Bush in his rookie year, we didn't see what Patrick Queen has become. Yep. 
Uh, I still think Roquan Smith's a better overall inside linebacker than Patrick Queen when we're compared since those two played together, oh, yeah. but it's not that far of a drop off. I'm again, the dude was second team all pro. I, I'm sorry, it, like we can talk about Pro Bowls. Like, one, I know one of the things we talked about with Russell Wilson was nine time Pro Bowler. We can talk about Pro Bowls all we want, but when a dude is mentioned, is named either first or second team all pro, that's whenever you know that they are the best of the best. I understand that's media that votes on that and everything. Like I get that media Mm -hmm. has biases and so so on and so forth, but it's still an elite of the elite. Like those all pro selections and and even second team, all pro guys that, that he, and he's deserving of it. And so, um, and the great thing about this is, is that they now have an elite player at all three levels of their defense. They have TJ Watt up front on the edge. They have Patrick Queen in the middle on the second level, and, that, and they obviously have Minka Fitzpatrick on the back end. Yep. And they even have Alex Highsmith, who's a very, very good complement to TJ Watt on the other side. And they have a budding star in Joey Porter Jr. at cornerback. It's a good piece to have. Th- these are these are great pieces to have. Yeah, and th- I, 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 it's it's funny how like one signing on the defense can can kind of help put this unit over the top, but it really does because now. Minka Fitzpatrick doesn't have to play in the box as much nope. because Patrick Queen is not only great against the run, he's probably even better against the pass. So when we're talking about like all the Tampa two and any, anything else that, that Patrick Queen is going to be asked to do in the middle of the field in that intermediate level, it's taken care of. It's locked up. Minka Fitzpatrick doesn't have to play there anymore. Nope. I mean, think of what it does to for planning purposes. Okay. The Steelers don't have to use a top three pick on a linebacker now. They don't have to draft Pate Wilson or Edrin Cooper or any of the top guys that are in the draft. Yeah. Or Tommy Eichenberg. They don't have to anymore. This is a move that sets them up, obviously, for three years, potentially even longer. Yeah. What if Patrick Queen's a stud? What if he is as advertised? What if he plays to the level that he just played at in 2023 for the next three years? Do the Steelers re-up him? What happens down the road? This is a move. Where if all works out, it is the is the inside linebacker the present and future for this franchise, and that opens up everything. Mm-hmm. That opens up everything. Now the Steelers don't have to go and select. And I like Peyton Wilson. I like Andrew Cooper. I like these. I like some of these linebackers in the draft. They don't have to take them within the top no. within the top three rounds of the draft. They can ah. focus on offensive line and wide receiver and and whether it's center or tackle and safety and corner. They could focus on other needs now. Because they committed, number one, the money. Number two, they set the market. When you set the market, that's telling teams, this is we're, we're grading this high-end free agent. We may not grade these linebackers at high-end either. That's yep. going to open up the doors for just about everything else. Yeah. I, 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 in terms of the actual X's and O's and then you know the, the um, overall impact on, on the team, the that that's where I can begin to kind of logically, you know, b- begin to start fitting pieces together because at first it's just like, wow, like, that's just the immediate reaction. It's just wow. Because we don't, we don't talk about, we, we don't talk about the Steelers ever doing this because they don't do this. Right. No. Uh, and so when we, now I can, you know, okay. Now I'm thinking, okay, how does Patrick queen fit in the defense? Um, I actually really, really like the idea and this is nothing against Cole Holcomb at all because I really like the way Cole Holcomb played. But I think Patrick Queen playing next to Atlanta Roberts is actually a really, really cool, interesting dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, because Atlanta Roberts is a guy who will absolutely fill gaps and take away or, or just take you know, take up space. And that would then that then allows Patrick Queen to do what he's so good at doing, and that's use his instincts. Be patient, not overcommit, and then be able to defend that way. And Alana Roberts is a perfect complement to that, in my opinion. Yep. I don't know if it's not a perfect complement, it's a really good complement. It's a really good um, inside linebacker room. Yeah, yeah. Really I, good inside linebacker room. Queen, that, Cole Holcomb when he's healthy, and Alana Roberts. I mean, what more would you want? Yeah. Up there. Um, yeah. And and now, you know, and again, you know, we talk about okay, let's see. Before this, the Steelers had almost about roughly 25 million in cap space. And we still have yet to see the contract breakdown, obviously. But you know, let's just say AAV. You know, it's barely, it's a little over thirteen million a year, almost fourteen million a year. You still got, you know, eleven million in cap space at least, because we don't know how this contract is going to be structured. 
Um, I would even say probably more than that. It, typically, the first year is not the most expensive year on these kind of contracts. Um, but they can still do other things. They can still restructure contracts. TJ can be restructured. Uh, Alex Highsmith can be restructured. Uh, Ogan Joby can be restructured. Through all the kind of uh, re restructures and everything they can do, they can still create plenty of cap space to go and get other guys. Yes. Not, I don't know about playing at the top of the market, just be just in terms, not because they might not be willing to, but because in just a, in terms of sheer volume or sheer like actual cost, but they can still go get some other dudes at other positions. They can still go out and get a, get a good center. I know there's a lot of centers gone now, right. but they can still go out and get, you know, maybe they, maybe something works out where they can, you know, beef up the inside of the uh, defensive line. Add some help for for Cam Hayward, who's getting near the end <laughs> with for the Larry Ogunjobi. With the money that some of these D tackles are getting, oh, I'm not saying goodness. top of the market. There. I know, no, I know. No, that's that's yeah. Like wh wh what did uh, what's his face get yesterday? Like 27 oh, million. Wilkins years, got like that. Wilkins got the brakes truck and he got the brakes. He got the brakes company. I You're think, not kidding, man. man. That was oh enough. my goodness. Listen, I, I'm not gonna. I don't want to throw water on this fire by any stretch, but let's. This doesn't fix the offense, okay? Signing Patrick Queen doesn't fix the offense. The offense still needs fixed. The offensive line still needs two pieces. There still needs probably right. another receiver added. The quarterback situation is still, as we discussed yesterday, but the quarterback situation. But, but this gives you a piece for the now and later on yeah. the defense at a really good cost, and he'll play at a really high level. And that's yeah. what you know you get with Patrick Queen. But to to that point, yes, there are still things to fix on the offense. Um. The Steelers don't have an elite quarterback. No, they right? do not. They, they don't have an elite quarterback. Russell Wilson's past his prime. Kenny Pickett has shown no signs yet of being an elite quarterback. Three fourths of Super Bowls have been won by quarterbacks who are either in the Hall of Fame or will be in the Hall of Fame. Oh yeah. But what gives you the second best chance to win a Super Bowl? Having an, a great, great defense. Mm -hmm. And so that the Steelers are in a lot more control over. And adding Patrick Queen absolutely helps in that endeavor because they already have the best defensive player in the league in TJ Watt. They have one of the best safeties that probably the only one I would definitely put over him right now would be Antoine Winfield jr. Um, but make Fitzpatrick in the back end and now Patrick queen is yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's so this is a great signing. I don't, if somebody doesn't like it, please tell me because I oh, have yeah. yet to see how anybody would think this is a bad signing, it's especially not. for the money. Because I did not think there was even a chance that the Steelers would sign him just because of what the cost was probably going to be. Sure. What did PFF project? I, I'm curious now. What did go PFF ahead and look that up. In the get? meantime, here's what I'm going to play. Okay, there's a clip of a story that Patrick Queen has told last season. Mike Yes, he told it last season yeah. about Mike Tomlin. And for I remember during the Combine week, somebody in the feed on DKPittsburghSports.com essentially said there was a prospect. I think it was Roma Dunsey, actually, the uh, receiver from Washington, who's projected to go in the top 10. And somebody essentially asked, like, you know, why? Why would the Steelers use time, use energy, use resources on talking to a player at the NFL Combine? It might have been Latham, the uh, Alabama tackle, but regardless – why would the Steelers use resources on talking to a player they're not going to be able to get in this draft? Why would they do that? Think of it this way. And, and I relate this to the Will Anderson story from last year. If you go back to before the Texans game, Mike Tomlin beaming about Will Anderson, the edge rusher for the Texans. Will Anderson was the consensus top overall defensive player in last year's draft. The Steelers had zero shot of drafting him in the first round last year. However, Mike Tomlin still had dinner with him. And, and this is what it's about in the NFL. This is why Mike Tomlin gets an A on the report card that the NFL PA publishes. Mm -hmm. This is why every player in the NFL that is outside of the Steelers locker room raves and rants and loves the idea of playing for Mike Tomlin because Mike Tomlin is a player's coach. And what I mean by that is nobody is better in the National Football League at establishing relationships than Mike Tomlin. So with that in mind, listen to what Patrick Queen had to say last season about an interaction with Mike Tomlin. Uh, when I was on, my, on their sideline my rookie year, Mike Tomlin was looking at me, yelling at me, you're not a Raven, you're not a Raven, you're not supposed to be there, you're not, you're not one of them. So uh, every time I play them, it's something personal. This is, Mike Tomlin was right, I guess. 
Yeah. 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 It's just hilarious, man, because, you know, like Tomlin, Tom, you, you can see it on his face whenever he finds players that he really, really likes. And when you hear certain things like this and Frank K kind of puts in it, I don't think this is just an Omar Khan thing. I think Mike Tomlin has a, has a say in this too. As I mean, he, he, he do, Wilson. yeah, he does absolutely have a, have a say in it. I, I'm, I'm not trying to say he doesn't. I'm just saying he has more than a, more of a hand in this because of, of who he is and his presence. Just go to the watch what he does at the senior bowl. Watch what happens. You know, watch the way players talk about him during the combine and during the pro day circuit. Mm-hmm. Um, go watch, go read if, if, don't do it now because the show's on. Yeah. <laughs> later on, if you want to scroll down on DKPittsburghSports.com, go back to my coverage from the Senior Bowl. I took a photo and I wrote a whole story on this interaction. Yep. Mike Tomlin was from me to this camera away from Roman Wilson, Michigan wide receiver, and Quinion Mitchell, cornerback from Toledo. He was from me to this camera away from that action. He set up that interaction and said, I want this cornerback against this wide receiver as many times as I can humanly possibly see it. Mike Tomlin's not getting paid to coach at the Senior Bowl. He's not enlisted to coach at the Senior Bowl. He has no technical role at the Senior Bowl. But he's on the field, engaged, in the huddles, in the player's ear, shaking hands, fist bumping, talking, doing all of that crowd control, so to speak. All of that crowd work, so to speak. And this is the result. I mean, look, if the Steelers draft Roman Wilson in the third round or whatever round, I'm not going to bat an eye because, hello, Mike Tomlin plants those seeds. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. If the Steelers draft Quinion Mitchell at 20 or or trades up to get him, I'm not going to bat an eye because he was right there in front of that play, seeing that play happen. It, it's it's actions, right? What do they say when you're, when you're five? Actions speak louder than words. Chris, you, you have two young kids. You probably teach your oh, kids dude. this. Actions are louder than words. Look what the Steelers do. Look at what they do. Look at the moves they make. When Mike Tomlin is on top of that play, you know he likes at least one of them. When Mike Tomlin says that to Patrick Queen, you know he likes Patrick Queen. It's it's that simple. It's all about relationships. And nobody is better as far as head coaches go in the NFL than Mike Tomlin. Yeah. They're they're, And that's honestly what what happens whenever – you have a football junkie for head coach. I mean, th- this dude lives and breathes football, and and literally every aspect of it, really, and not just the X's and O's, not just the game preparation, uh, but establishing relationships with players, with coaches, um, and I, I just I I, I don't really want to get too much you know on a different tangent here, but you know, imagine where the Steelers would be if they had another coach. You know, like especially especially whenever was whenever you consider the player survey for how the players feel about the rest of the organization. Mike Tomlin was the only one who got high marks. You know, a couple of you know decent decent reviews on some other things, but then you know the owner gets an F. What an F F, F minus. minus. Yeah, F minus for the treatment of families and yeah. an F for the owner. And Mike Tomlin, the highest grade they get is an A. Yeah. It's just I'm not saying that that should be the only thing that defines what the Steelers are nowadays, but it it, it it's also something that can't be ignored. And so, um, <laughs> you know, I I understand, you know, I I I understand why some people. I'm not saying Mike Tomlin is without without his faults. I'm not saying he's without criticism. You know, when you go for as long as you as he has without winning a playoff game, and for to go as long as he has since the last Super Bowl appearance with essentially nothing in the playoffs. What one championship game appearance since they lost the right. Super Bowl to the Packers. Um, you know, I, I get that. I understand that, you know, um, but it's certain things like, the, like, like this it's okay. Here's the best thing I can say. And then we can move on from the whole coach thing. You're good. The, the one thing that you're kind of seeing it now if you're a Penguins fan, you're kind of seeing it now play out for, from my perspective, at least the, the, the message seems to be getting a little stale with the players. Right. And for a, for a coach like Mike Tomlin, who is so uses more cliches than maybe any other coach in the league's history combined. Somehow the message doesn't get stale there. Yep. Players continuously buy in. They're all in and want to play for this guy. 
consistently year in year out the message never gets stale that's how you know that he still has a firm grasp on his team yep uh where is the comment that i start here oh context to the f for rudy basically it was a lack of confidence that art rudy's gonna spend the money to upgrade the facility on the south side yeah Um, it's it's not like they they think he's just like a trash owner or something like that you know but it's just yeah improving the improving the working conditions and i i'm glad Many have brought this up, but the most recent comment came from Big Hurt here. <laughs> Don't forget what Mike Tomlin said to Chase Young, and, I, and it's a comment no. that will forever live with me. Basically no. saying, we don't ever stink enough to get a guy as good as you in the draft, which is true. He's right. And they never want to stink that bad to get a Chase Young, no. the number two overall pick in the draft. They never want to be that bad. <laughs> and and look, when I talk about Will Anderson, again, the, the consensus best defensive player of the draft last year, and now you look at what Patrick Queen and, and what Mike Tomlin told him, that's what this all roots back to. Now, all right, let us let, let me sort through some comments here, and I, I think it's important to do that. First off, $20 contribution from Rico. Appreciate, we appreciate it, Rico, you. Man. Uh, says let the, Ravens, with the money, man. let the Ravens have the king. I'll take the young queen, and you best believe that con <laughs> the cat pro and Weidel aren't done. Uh, no, no are I not. don't. I uh, know they're not done. They're, no, they're they're, not. They, we, I mean, the one thing that I the initial preparation I had for this show was going to be be patient. The free agency is not defined in one day, right. especially before free agency actually officially begins tomorrow at uh, tomorrow at four p.m. Just be patient. I mean, the Isaac Sayamalu, I'm trying to remember, the Isaac Sayamalu signing didn't happen, I, I don't think, until it Saturday. Late. It was late in the process. It, it, well, I mean, it was in the first week, but it wasn't in that in the first few days of everything. It was like, okay, all the big top guys are gone, minus a few here and there, but like that big signing didn't happen until several days after the tampering mm-hmm. period started. I so, remember I remember it was, yeah. uh, we were we were sitting there talking, we were, we were like sitting at our, you know, chat talking, and out of nowhere, it was like, oh, they got Sam all And we're like, wait, what? Like, it was kind of an out of nowhere thing that yeah. they went and got him. And he turned out to be their best free agent signing well, last year, arguably. It was just, uh, well, the, yeah, that was, well, no, for sure. And yeah. that was a signing that I don't think anybody was expecting because it wasn't like guard was a big time need for them. I think they were content with Daniels and Dotson. Um, but when you have an opportunity to upgrade, I think th- I, I I wouldn't be shocked if you know when Omar Khan or Mike Tomlin or whoever else gets behind the podium to introduce Patrick Queen that they say we didn't think we had a chance, but whenever things played out the way that they did, you know, okay, okay for I, I did look it up on PFF. He was projected by PFF to get four years, seventy two and a half million. <laughs> and he got that's, that's an average of that's an average one, of just over eighteen million a year. He got way less than that. Yeah, I mean, Way not even not even that. fourteen million a year for for Patrick Queen. So when that plays out, when you, you know you okay, now all of a sudden it's not eighteen million a year. Now it's not even fourteen million. You can get the guy, dude. Get it, jump on it. I think that, I think that's pretty much what happened with Sam Mahler last year. They didn't think that we don't have a chance to get him. It's a hell but of a when move. It, whenever whenever that that opportunity presents itself and you can upgrade the position, like yeah, we like Kevin Dotson, but we have a chance to get a somebody better. Yeah. Why not? You know, hell of a pickup. Yeah, it really is. Hell of a pickup. All right. (laughs) Trevor, Trevor, what's Queen's pass rush win rate? Actually, Mm. it's probably pretty good. We'll find out what it is. All right. I'll look it up right now. Christopher says double wow. Pittsburgh's going to the Super Bowl. They they still have to clean some things up. Okay. Let's let's chill. Uh, Let's chill. But (laughs) be excited. I I will say, I will say this though. We had, we had a disagreement about the status of the Steelers roster. Oh, absolutely. Minus, minus quarterback. Absolutely. You said that they weren't even top eight. I said I you can make it. I said you can make an argument. I think no, we, to, we, we work through that. I think, we uh, I know, that. right. I'm saying that, but right now, what is this Patrick Qu- in your mind? Because to me now it's like almost an, almost a no, no brainer that it's, it's, it's closer to top. I, I'd have to obviously go through. I, it's closer to top 10 at least. It's top ten at least, I would say. Yeah. But it's a I, good roster. And, it is and, a good roster. It is. It's very no. I, I'm I'm not trying to like. There's more I don't have it. an I don't have a dog in the fight here. I'm just saying like. I'm just saying like. 
And Cody says here, the top 10 roster, if they pick up a good, if they put a, a, like, like a, a Simmons or anybody else on, on the back end next to, next to Minka, I mean, yeah, to me, that's. You got to include the quarterback though, Kai. Kai says yeah. outside of quarterback top eight roster, you have well, to include the quarterback. That's why I was taking quarterback out of it because yeah. obviously a quarterback, because like, look at you take the current roster and you put Kirk Cousins on it. They're a Super Bowl contender. Like okay. borderline Super Bowl contender. Now they don't have that. They have Kenny Pickett and Russell Wilson. Now, with a really, really strong defense and good running game. Hey, <laughs> let's the big show. I just by the way, well. I have Chalk Talk coming out tomorrow. I've been yeah. doing a lot. I've watched four, five, five Russell Wilson games from last year. Nice. And um you got yeah, something. I, I'm 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 convinced. I I just I don't I don't think Kenny Pickett can win that competition. I just don't. You know what's funny is if if this didn't happen today, mm -hmm. I I was going to open the show with how I went to bed last night and I thought over the events from the day, the last whatever it was, 24 hours by that point, and I was just kind of I was still puzzled. I I, I was still puzzled by Russell Wilson. I was still puzzled of why they would do this. I was still puzzled of how this happened given the the outward expression from mike tomlin art rooney and omar khan that they all wanted mason rudolph back i i i, I laid there and i'm like why did this happen how did this happen what's the what's the play here what's the end game here and, and it still puzzles me quite frankly because this could either be great it could be good it could totally suck we don't know we don't know yeah. so Obviously, they did some diligence on that. And then there's the Mason Rudolph quotient where, you know, they essentially make this Wilson move and Mason hasn't gone anywhere yet. Now, again, they probably vetted or Mason even vetted and said, you guys aren't really going to give me a competition or you guys aren't paying me enough money. And maybe Mason said no. Or the Steelers looked at Russell Wilson and said, this is maybe a better option than what we could give Mason. And it's going to it's going to save us a significant amount of money. Obviously, we have to see how Mason Rudolph plays out. But my point is, yeah. if this Patrick Queen did, thing didn't happen, I was going to sit here today on this show and say, I'm still on the fence. I, I still don't know how to feel about this. Now, looking at the Patrick Queen signing, this changes everything as far mm -hmm. as the outlook of the offseason in terms of what the Steelers do in the rest of free agency and particularly the draft. Now, when it comes to the draft, Sebastian asks, is DT still a big need? Come draft day, I think it can be. I think there are players that Kai yeah. Blue says is 20 too early for uh, yeah, Tavondre Sweat, I the DT for that's Texas. too early for Sweat. I think so, but at 51, if they get their guy in the, in the first yeah. round, and we got to see how the rest of free agency shakes out now, because think of it this way. You can rule out inside linebacker pretty much in the top three rounds of the draft. You could rule them out day one and day two, which – to me, shifts the focus on offensive tackle, center, cornerback, and defensive tackle. I think the safety market is so large that the Steelers just have to come away with one of them. I think that's bound to happen by this stage. Now, DT, wide receiver, tackle, center, four really important positions of need right there. Sure, look at it in the draft. See what's there. I think, I think right now the most likely play in the draft in the first round as an offensive tackle, namely Mims, maybe Fuaga if he falls, maybe Fountainell if he falls, the Washington kid. I think those are very good cho uh, very good choices. At corner, Terry and Arnold and Quinion Metro are my top two. And I think any of those avenues are fine. If they want Jackson Powers Johnson at 20, or if they want to trade up maybe in the second round for Zach Frazier or wait in the second round to get Frazier, great. I think those are all good options. But yeah. I think what this does what the Patrick Queen signing does is it opens up every possibility like that for the Steelers within the draft. They're not committed to having to take a linebacker in this draft. This was going to happen one way or another with free agency. That's just how this works. Yeah. You address a need now, you address a need later. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they paid top dollar for the top inside linebacker free agent on the market, it screams to me that they're evaluating other things early in the draft. Yep. Um... By the way, really quick, um, Patrick Queen's pass rush win rate uh -oh. was 18%, which is the same exact percentage for Alex Highsmith. 
and uh, was uh, actually 1.1% higher than TJ Watts, 16.9%. <laughs> so PFF loves Patrick Queen. Now, well, granted, a different position, but still. Oh, um, oh my God. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, Really quick to touch on the quarterback stuff because I know we're getting near, and this could be in like my final thought for the day because you know we we could yeah, probably go yeah. on for an hour or so talking about Patrick Queen, but um, really quick on the quarterback stuff, you know, I'm not going to give anything away from from Chalk Talk. I'm going to want you to read that, but uh, um, I I'm I'm really curious of how this Russell Wilson thing can can work out because I do think. It's not a perfect fit in Arthur Smith's offense. There are cer- there are certain areas of Russell Wilson's game that don't mesh, but there are other areas that do mesh. Um, but it's really interesting to me, and this is a situation in which I would want to hear Kenny Pickett answer differently if he's asked if he can learn from the sideline, hmm. because Russell Wilson and Kenny Pickett are actually not that different. The biggest difference between Russell Wilson and Kenny Pickett, the biggest difference between Russell Wilson and Kenny Pickett, there's two two big ones. Russell Wilson has a much better arm. I mean, just in terms of arm talent, the ability to throw the deep ball, that's one. And then number two, he can make plays from outside the pocket and does it very, very well, even as recent as last season. When Kenny Pickett's at his best, when's he usually at his best? Like I think about the, the the touchdown pass to Najee Harris to beat the Ravens in his rookie year, rolls out of the pocket, makes a throw on the run, improvises. Like to me, that that is Kenny. That is when Kenny's at his best. Russell Wilson also th- struggles with throws over the middle of the field, not in terms of numbers, but in terms of committing to do it. Um, he holds on to the ball too long. Uh, struggles in, inside the pocket at times. Now, I think the reasons why are different. You know, Kenny Pickett has a good size for quarterback. Russell Wilson doesn't. Uh, Russell Wilson is very short. He might not just be able to see the middle of the field very well because of how short he is. Um, but in terms of like those things, it's not that different of a profile. The difference is, is that Russell Wilson has what what he does well, he does and has done very, very, very well, which is why he's going to get consideration for the Hall of Fame. Sure. But it's just in, like to me, if it is a situation in which Russell Wilson comes in and wins the starting job, how is Kenny Pickett going to learn by watching what Russell Wilson does? Because, again, you're talking about a similar type of quarterback. They play the game. They want to play the game in a similar way. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not. Do not get me. Do not miss have this misconstrued and saying that I think Kenny Pickett has a similar pedigree to Russell Wilson. That sure, is sure, not sure. true at all. No, no. I'm just saying, like they want to play in a similar way. They are most comfortable playing off schedule, outside and outside the pocket, improvising, doing things like that. That's where they are most comfortable and can do the most damage to defenses. I'm sure you'll have a lot more in your chalk talk. Yes. As you break that film down. I have, I have a combo. I have two short final thoughts right here. Uh, number one, uh, a Tenchi fan says, I see the Steelers drafted powers. Johnson. I don't at this stage. I think they value Frazier more than powers. Johnson at this stage. I think they think, I think they think that Frazier is a better fit than powers. Johnson powers. Johnson might be the quote unquote better center. But man, I love how Frazier plays. He's nasty. I love how Frazier plays. No. Um, I think that's. I think that might be the better fit too. And that's not to knock Powers Johnson. I think he's a tremendous center. It could fit anywhere. But I think Frazier's a good fit in Pittsburgh. Uh, and number two, uh, where is that one comment that I had? Yenzer says, "Anyone realize we got a new punter? <laughs> Let's not leave Cam Johnson out of this. All right? You mean Bill Burr?" Yeah, the Bill Burr lookalike. <laughs> Let's not leave Cam Johnston Dude, out of this discussion man. today. My gosh, I I like it. I like it. Three million a year, good signing, veteran veteran leg. Yep, he's got good good distance. The the hang time is a little questionable. Now, if anybody's talking special teams here, it's me. Okay, I'm a Youngstown guy. We love our kicking. We love our punting. We train kickers and punters when we're little. That's what happens in Northeast Ohio. Listen, I, I like this for the Steelers. Now, some are saying, "Oh, he's an indoor punter." Screw that. Screw that. If you could punt, you could punt. He's had some good ones. He's a good one. He's a good punter. The Steelers paid money for a good punter. 
Yeah. Let's not let's not lose sight of that. We're not going to be sitting here talking about Brad Wing. No disrespect meant to Brad Wing. We're not going to be sitting here talking about Brad Wing in, in, in the middle of November. That's not what's going to be happening. Yeah, Steelers got a good one. They paid the the good money for a good punter. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, it was a need. Uh, I obviously wouldn't put it near the top of uh, in terms of needs, but you know, I, I do think about like. Now, granted, it was in a monsoon, but that might even be the more the more reason. You know, that that season finale against the Ravens, it was like Presley Harvin couldn't get anything through the weather. And Ravens, dude, was freaking just cutting. The ball was cutting through the, the, the wind and the rain like it was nothing. You know, like there's a way to do it. And, and you know, the Steelers hadn't had that. And when you can play, when you can have an advantage in field position more often than not, you're going to set yourself up for not only preventing the other team from scoring points, but putting yourself in position to score more points yourself. And when we talk about, again, if Russell Wilson ends up being the guy, and I think personally that if it is a true competition, that Russell Wilson will win that competition just based off of merit and performance, then they have a better chance of being able to score points because 26 touchdowns last year compared to 25 between all Steelers quarterbacks over the last two seasons. They should be able to score more points. They should be able to run the ball better. They should have a better offense in general because of Arthur Smith, a better overall system, and possibly have a quarterback that's going to put them in position to score more points. And when you have a punter that can help flip the field for you or help pin the opposing de- uh, the opposing team it deep in their own territory more often than not, it helps. It's something that is wi- wildly overlooked sometimes. And it, it it's it's a good it's it's good and honestly they how often do the Steelers do something like this and we didn't see them do it throughout Ben's career because they're having to pay so much to a quarterback and right now they're paying nothing at quarterback nope. so they can do this kind of stuff. Uh, you know who else was a wrestler? Mike says Frazier's wrestling background interests me more for the position. You know who else has a really deep wrestling background? Keanu Benton. Yes. Just going to leave that one there. And Jim says, love what he said, uh, what Frazier said, his combine interview. I'll have way more on Frazier as the draft nears uh, because yeah. I'm in for that combine interview. And uh, really good stuff from Zach Frazier. I'm kind of saving it for for a later date. Yeah. Uh, but but I will have something in the near future on Zach Frazier. All right, we're getting out of here. Good day today. Patrick Queen's a stealer. Get excited for that. That's something to be Patrick Queen, about. man. I, I'm still I'm still shocked. Something I, to like, be like, about. Legit. Good move by Omar Khan, objectively. Mm-hmm. He's not done yet. He's Chris. I'm Corey. This has been the Southside Beat. I believe DK and Ramon are coming up in 20 minutes. We'll have to stay tuned for that. I, He's think, I, did, I did see Ramon tweet out a, a black heart and a yellow heart. Uh, <laughs> oh, I uh, bet Ramon uh, is. The, quoting, quote, tweeting Patrick Queen's, uh, um, tweeting out the gif of uh, Heath Ledger's Joker going, and here we I bet Moan um, is beaming over this one. Yeah, it's we'll uh, see. it's very yeah. Seriously, I'm I'm. It's interesting, man. It's interesting, and Russell Wilson's obviously very happy about this. He tweeted out maybe a couple minutes afterward. Queen. Yeah, not even that long after. He like a right couple away. minutes after it broke. Uh, so oh, yeah. by this time tomorrow, we'll be twenty minutes away from the official start of free agency. So. It's going to be pretty wild, at least throughout the end of the week. Remember to keep it locked to DKPittsburghSports.com in the feed, our Steelers feed, for all of that. Remember, if you have not done so yet, please download our app on the Apple App Store, Google Play Store, 100% free to do so. And it is free to turn on notifications for your favorite teams. There's no social media trolling. There's no BS. It's, it's, it's straight what you want and what you need from your favorite teams. That's Steelers, Pirates, Pens. Pitt, Penn State, Duquesne, Robert Morris. If you think it in this city, it's there. You want to check that out. Again, DK Pittsburgh Sports app, free on the Apple App Store, Google Play Store. He's Chris Halleck. I'm Corey Chris, and we're out of here. We will talk to you on Wednesday. Cheers, everybody. Have a good one.